Hey, what's going on everyone? I hope this video finds you well. My name is Jonathan Riddell, and today we will introduce a simple but fascinating counterexample to the emergence of statistical mechanics. Today, we will discuss Anderson localization. But before we get started, I will be doing a live stream on Sunday, May 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern to answer questions about the video and anything else you might be interested in. Anderson localization can be thought of as a metal to insulator transition, or an example of the system remembering its initial conditions at long times. Before we jump into a conversation directly with breaking statistical mechanics, let's first discuss what we generally expect to happen when we assume statistical mechanics is valid. The standard way of seeing this might be to study the so-called heat equation uh, that's given here. This equation describes heat flow in a homogeneous and isotropic medium, where U is the temperature at a specific point in space and time. Alpha here is a positive constant called the thermodiffusivity of the medium. While the content of this equation isn't really important, it satisfies the second law of thermodynamics, having heat flow from hot to cold. It tells us that the rate at which a material heats up or cools down is proportional to how much hotter or colder its, neighbor, its neighboring points are. We can construct a particularly instructive example of a system going to thermodynamic equilibrium by imagining a 256 by 256 uh, grid of points all given initial temperatures uh, between 0 and 1. We imagine this grid of points is surrounded by a heat bath fixed at U is equal to 1 or temperature is equal to 1, seen here as the red border around our grid. Here in this plot, red means hot and blue means cold. The exact numerical values aren't too important, as we will discuss shortly. The initial conditions of our grid are uniformly generated randomly. The important thing to take away here is that our initial conditions are very specific and unique. If we slice up our system into subsystems, no subsystem would look the same. So now I'll play a video of the time evolution and how these things go to equilibrium. Pay attention specifically to the erasure of initial conditions. So we went from a situation that looked like this at t is equal to zero, uh, notably an initial condition with complex structure, to a completely uniform, all one temperature, late time state of the system. This was the process of the heat bath thermal thermalizing our grid to be the same temperature as the bath. Heat was allowed to flow through the medium unimpeded. Whatever we might imagine was carrying the energy propagated through the system freely um, and slowly brought the grid to equilibrium. Now, an interesting question you might ask is, does this system somehow contain information about its initial conditions even in this late time state? The answer is obviously no. There is no way you can take the late time picture and reconstruct the initial picture. Since information is always conserved, what's happening here is that the initial conditions are being spread out over the grid and into the bath so extensively that it would be impossible to reconstruct the initial conditions in practice. And this picture isn't unique. We would expect this behavior uh, for the simulation regardless of the initial conditions. We can always start from a complex initial condition with unique structure, but with time, we erase that information in the process of thermalization for all intents and purposes. 
So let's discuss a model where this doesn't happen and where we can remember our initial conditions and we can avoid thermalization even in long times. To do this, let's set up a toy model. Let's imagine a one-dimensional lattice pictured here as six slots that electrons uh, can sit in. Of course, in practice, we want, the, uh, we want it such that there are a macroscopically large number of lattices, but for our example, uh, this, this will do. In our toy model, we allow the electron to hop to its neighboring sites. And just to be clear, we will be treating uh, this problem in this model quantum mechanically. We will label our lattice sites with integer indices in the order at which they appear, left to right, and we denote the expectation value that, a, that an electron is at any given site m as the following expression, and note that since these are electrons, this expectation value uh, can only vary from 0 to 1. We imagine uh, applying some form of a field uh, to the lattice, so that there is some energy associated with the electron sitting at a particular site. The simplest example of this would be a uniform field so that the associated energy of an electron um, due to sitting on a lattice site is the same everywhere. We call this field strength uh, lambda for convenience with a label M telling us that it could be different at different lattice sites. For the sake of our example, we will assume that the relative height of the lattice site now tells us the relative energy difference bet between two on-site potentials. In our case, all the lattice sites are at the same height with each other because the field in this example is equal everywhere along the lattice. But what if it wasn't uniform everywhere? In the 1950s, Anderson realized that if we applied a disorder field, that is, we randomly distributed a lambda for each site in between some negative w and positive w, the dynamics of the electron would fundamentally change. Pictorially, according to our example, this would look like the following lattice site picture. Now there is a real energy difference when we hop to neighboring lattice sites, either energetically favorable or not. In the following picture, it turns out that we localize as soon as W is non-zero, and what this means uh, will become obvious shortly. Another way we can achieve a disordered medium is to instead of randomly generating the field, we can impose a quasi-periodic field. This is known as the Aubrey-Andre model. This can be seen as lambda being site-dependent and given by the following expression. We have a constant lambda, which dictates the overall strength of the field, times the cosine with the argument two times pi times sigma times the lattice site number m. Sigma here is taken to be an irrational number, or at least a very good approximation to, a, to an irrational number. The constant lambda is our so-called disorder parameter and will dictate how disordered the medium is that the electrons need to travel through. In most examples, sigma is taken to be the inverse golden ratio, um, which is the so-called most irrational number. This then makes the period of the cosine equal to the golden ratio. For our example dynamics, we will have 800 lattice sites and we will put one electron um, at lattice site 400 directly in the middle. It's important to note here that since we have perfect knowledge of the position, Heisenberg's uncertainty principle tells us that we know absolutely nothing, basically, about the velocity. We will track how the occupation number changes in time for each lattice site. If the particle is allowed to move around freely and explore the lattice, then we expect that something that looks like statistical mechanics uh, can emerge. If it cannot move around freely, then we call it Anderson localized and we see an example of a system that cannot thermalize. Throughout the numerical experiments, we will 
generally increase lambda, which will increase the disorder, and then we will discuss the effects that changing lambda has on the dynamics of the electrons. So first up, um, let's discuss how the electron behaves if lambda here is set to zero, which is the case corresponding uh, to no disorder. So what can we take away from this? The electrons spread out in each direction at the same pace, roughly uh, linearly at some velocity. This is called an extended phase. We call it um, extended because the energy eigenstates that govern the dynamics have roughly equal support everywhere on the lattice. We expect that at the end of the dynamics, the ex expectation value for every lattice will be roughly proportional to 1 over the, um, the, the total number of lattice sites, that is each lattice site is basically sharing the electron equally. So what happens if I increase the lambda to 0 0.5, which adds disorder to the system? At lambda is equal to 0 0.5, we see another extended phase. The electron is allowed to pro propagate through the system, although in this case it was a little bit slower than the no disorder case. So let's tune this up a bit and let's say that lambda is equal to 1.2. Now we see that the electron cannot move away from its central location or its central region. This is called a localized phase. Now our number operators at late times are exponentially suppressed around where the electron started at, which in our case was lattice site 400. This is due to the energy eigenstates being localized themselves. They only have support on an exponentially suppressed region of the lattice. This region is dictated by the correlation length xi and dictates how localized our system is. Now, since we went from an extended to a localized phase, there must be a critical point, right? The critical point happens to be at lambda is equal to 1 for our model. So let's take a look at the dynamics for, uh, for completion, where we have neither a fully extended uh, phase nor a localized phase. We will definitely have to take a look at the Aubrey-Andre model in more detail uh, for a future video, but for now we will leave the topic here. It's important to note that these models uh, can be experimentally studied and Anderson localization has been observed by experimentalists. I'll leave a link uh, to all of these articles in the description. Uh, as always guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, feel free to like, subscribe, and leave a comment below.